We'll be ending our webcast early around the T plus eight minute mark just after Falcon 9 touches back down to land. And just like Thursday, we have another three hour launch window to get Falcon 9 off the ground today. If for some reason we are not able to launch today, we do have a backup window opportunity uh, tomorrow at the same time. So far, we are at T minus 12 and a half minutes and counting. Uh, all systems are go for an on time liftoff. And with that, let's take a closer look at Falcon 9. You're looking at launch pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center with Falcon 9 getting ready for launch. Our rocket stands at 229 feet tall or slightly taller than a 21 story building. Falcon 9 has two stages and also uses two types of propellants, which we'll talk a little bit more about later on the webcast. The bottom two thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. It's designed to be reflown 10 or more times with minimal refurbish refurbishment in between flights. Today will be the fifth flight for this particular first stage, as you can see by the re-entry set markings on it. Uh, at the bottom of the first stage are nine Merlin engines that will get Falcon 9 off the ground and up to the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. The two stages will then separate from one another. The second stage continues to orbit while the first stage makes its way back down to Earth for its landing attempt at landing zone one. If successful, this will be the fifth landing for the booster on today's mission. It will also mark the 70th successful recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage. As for the second stage, that's what you're seeing on screen right now. It will ignite its single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine about two and a half minutes into flight. It's this engine that will take the NROL-108 spacecraft to its intended orbit. And speaking of the satellite, it's currently safely enclosed inside the 17 foot diameter payload fairing, which is that structure at the very top of the rocket. This protects the satellites from aerodynamic heating, loads and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing halves while the second stage continues to orbit. Uh, for today's mission, both fairing halves are brand new. We're also gonna be attempting to retrieve them from the water today using our recovery ships, Miss Tree and Go Searcher. One thing to notice is some unique artwork on the fairing. This was chosen by the NRO because gorillas are peaceful animals but can be fierce when necessary, acting quickly to defend themselves and warn others at any sign of a threat. And like the gorilla, this mission is constantly vigilant and ready to defend its own, demonstrating the NRO's commitment to protecting the United States' warfighters, interests, and alliances. We're coming up on 10 minutes to launch. Uh, all conditions continue to be green for liftoff. Uh, at the T minus 38 minute mark, the SpaceX launch director held the go, no go poll for propellant load and launch. Uh, we're currently working no issues on the Falcon 9 vehicle. Falcon, Falcon 9 also began loading propellant since the T minus 35 minute mark when we started loading fuel into both stages and oxidizer into the first stage. Our fuel is a refined form of kerosene known as rocket propellant one or RP1. Fuel is fully loaded on the second stage and will finish loading on the first stage at around the T minus six minute mark. And as I mentioned a moment ago, our oxidizer is super chilled liquid oxygen. We also refer, refer to it as LOX. LOX is currently being loaded into both first and second stages and we load it as late as possible to keep it from warming up and decreasing performance. We're also, finish he we're also finishing helium loading as, Merlin, as the Merlin engine pumps pull RP-1 and LOX out of the tanks, we need to fill this empty volume called the eulage. We use the helium stored in pressure vessels and expand it using heat from the Merlin engine gas generator's exhaust. Uh, in about two minutes at T minus seven minutes, uh, engine chilling will begin. This is where we allow a small amount of super chilled liquid oxygen to flow past the turbo pump inlets, cooling them to avoid thermal shocks when we light the Merlin engines at T minus two seconds. Uh, if we happen to have another hold to the countdown today, we do have another three hour launch window that could allow us to reload the ultra cold liquid oxygen and make another launch attempt today. Again, this presumes that we understand whatever caused us to hold the count and can safely proceed with recycle and launch. If we can't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow around the same time. Uh, for the range, everything is looking green and they are standing by ready to support today's mission. Uh, for weather, it's looking much better than Thursday with only a 10% chance of violation. All systems are go for a liftoff at 9 a.m. Eastern time. 
As I mentioned earlier, the National Reconnaissance Office, or NRO, is a joint Department of Defense intelligence community organization responsible for developing, launching, and operating America's signals, imagery, and communication satellites. Here's a closer look at the NRO and its capabilities. T-minus three, two, one, zero. Ignition. We are the agency that made the impossible possible, protected the world, and brought technology to levels undreamt of. The race to space was a series of firsts, and we were there. We were the first to surveil our adversaries from the high ground of space, literally taking technology to new heights, watching our adversaries, guarding against the threat of nuclear war, and providing strategic advantage to our nation. We were the agency no one had heard of because we worked in total secrecy. But we've stepped out of the shadows and we are writing the next chapters of American space technology. We are the National Reconnaissance Office, the NRO, the world leader in our tradecraft, collecting top secret imagery and signals from space. Natural disasters threaten thousands of lives. Conflicts displace millions and adversaries mount threats. We give advance warning, aid in the aftermath, protect our citizens, and safeguard the world. load is complete and is closing out. We are the only agency that develops these tools, partnering with the intelligence community, the military, and the best of private industry to drive innovation. We are the leader in space intelligence systems, the NRO. At the heart of it, our people. People who take satellites from idea to orbit, focusing talent and resources, developing, building, launching, operating, sophisticated NRO systems that help us maintain global vigilance 24-7, 365. Small sets made possible by miniaturization, reducing costs and expanding possibilities. Large satellites with capabilities designed to answer our toughest national security questions. Pioneering achievements on the ground where analysts bring it all together. How do we do it? By investing in the latest research and development, using augmentation, automation, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Employing acquisition strategies to encourage competition enabling us to work with the industry's best and brightest, like-minded people committed to technology without limits. This is where careers rise to heights unimagined, where you can take your eyes and ears into space. We deliver, under budget and on schedule, meeting and exceeding expectations to answer questions yet unasked. We develop new technologies every day and put them to use in record time in the high ground of space. No one can match us. The National Reconnaissance Office, the world leader in intelligence gathering. We are the NRO. We are just under four minutes from liftoff. Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown, and the vehicle remains in good health. Uh, just a few minutes ago, we finished RP-1 loading on the first stage. And uh, right now, the transport director is beginning to retract away from Falcon 9 to provide clearance for liftoff. At the T-minus three-minute mark, liquid oxygen should finish loading on the first stage. And at the T-minus two-minute mark, liquid oxygen will finish loading on the second stage, which is the last of propellant loading for the vehicle. At T-minus one minute, Falcon 9 is in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers are now controlling the launch countdown. The range continues to be green for launch. Uh, the weather is also continuing to look great. As a reminder, if we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern.
For those of you just joining us, this mission is for the National Reconnaissance Office. Uh, the payload today is NROL-108. This will be our second mission for the NRO and the ninth for national security customers. You can start to see some white clouds forming around Falcon 9. That is normal for us. That is condensed liquid oxygen. Uh, as that super chill liquid oxygen reaches the warmer ambient air temperatures of Florida, it starts to condense, and that's what you see on screen right now. Just a few minutes from liftoff of Falcon 9. This is the 26th Box and final mission for us uh, at SpaceX for 2020. Just heard the call-outs that LOX loading has now completed. Yes, launch close out. Fifteen seconds, uh, Falcon 9 is in startup, and both stages will begin to pressurize for launch. And then shortly after that, we should hear the launch director give the final go for launch and liftoff. We are good for launch. NROL 108, 30 seconds from liftoff. Let's tune in and see Falcon 9. T minus 30 seconds. Space. We are T plus 40 seconds into flight. That is a gorgeous shot of Falcon 9. Oh, uh, we are in the middle of the NROL 108 mission. Falcon 9 is currently throttling down to prepare for max Q at T plus 1 minute and 12 seconds. Max Q is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. Falcon is supersonic. Maximum aerodynamic pressure. We've passed max Q. All is looking good with the stage one trajectory. In about a minute, we'll have five events happening back to back. Uh, first up is main engine cutoff. We also refer to that as MECO. Uh, this is where ni all nine Merlin engines on the first stage will shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, and stage separation. Uh, during stage separation, uh, the first and second stage will separate from one another. The third event is second engine start, or SES-1. Uh, this is where the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite. The fourth event is boost back burn for the first stage. And the last of these five events is fairing deploy, where we will jettison the nose cone at the top of our second stage. Uh, a reminder, again, we won't be sh broadcasting the fairing deploy at the request of our customer, but we should get audio confirmation of it. We're about 15 seconds away from the first of those five events, main engine cutoff.
Stage separation confirmed. Second staging. Stage one, boost back startup. Turn separation confirmed. And we just got the auto confirmation that fairing separation has been confirmed. Uh, on the right-hand side of the screen is a view uh, of the first stage performing its boost back burn. Uh, that is a great shot. In a couple of seconds, we're expecting that boost back burn to be ending on the first stage. Stage one boost back shot down. And there it is. T plus three minutes and 20 seconds into flight. Everything's looking great so far. Uh, with the boost back burn done, done, our first stage will be attempting its land landing in just a few minutes. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. Land landings have a number of advantages over water landings. First, they are not subject to ocean storms that might affect the drone ship. Secondly, landing on land significantly streamlines post-launch processing of the recovered first stage. We'll be able to refurbish boosters right here at our facilities at the Cape, rather than waiting for the drone ships to return to port. And these types of efforts support our future goal of a 24-hour turnaround from landing to reflight. So on screen, both of those views of, are of the first stage. The left-hand side is a view from the top of our first stage uh, looking downward. And the right-hand side is a tracking shot from the ground as our first stage makes its descent back towards Earth. Acquisition of signal to Hampshire. Those periodic plumes of gas that you're seeing, that's nitrogen gas from our attitude control systems. Those help to orient the Falcon 9 first stage as it returns back to Earth. Uh, in order to land, the first stage has two more burns left. Uh, next up is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin engines will reignite. This helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, we're about 90 seconds away from that second burn. Second stage following a nominal trajectory. Second stage seems to be doing great. Uh, if you've been watching our previous webcasts, usually at this point we have a view of our first and second stages. Again, as a reminder, uh, per our customer's request, we will not be showing any views of the second stage. So for now, we'll be watching the first stage make its returned and eventual landing attempt uh, at landing zone one in Florida. Just under a minute away from the second of three burns, uh, those you can see that our hypersonic grid fins have also deployed. Those are the honeycomb-like structures that you see on screen right now. Those help to guide the rocket back during its descent as well. Just a few seconds away from the entry burn beginning. Stage one entry burn startup. And you can see on screen three Merlin engines have relit and are currently slowing the stage down. This burn lasts for a total of 26 seconds. Stage one entry burn shut down. And the second, second burn for the first stage is trajectory. done. Next up is the landing burn, about 40 seconds away. During the first stage landing burn, a single Merlin stage engine will relight and slow the vehicle down for its fifth landing attempt at landing zone one in Florida, about 25 seconds later. You can see that uh, we can start to see the Earth approaching. 
as the first stage continues to make its descent. As a reminder, we are ending the webcast after Falcon 9 lands, and we won't be sharing any views of our, of our second stage at the request of our customer. Stage one landing burn startup. There's that single engine relight. Here comes Falcon 9 for its fifth landing attempt Stage two at landing zone one. Saved. Stage one landing like deploy. Stage two start of terminal guidance. And Falcon 9 does it again. That's five times for this booster and the 70th successful recovery of a Falcon 9 to date. Uh, congratulations to uh, all those that have been working on uh, today's mission. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, at the request of our customer, the National Reconnaissance Office, we are concluding our webcast coverage early today. We want to thank the NRO for entrusting us with today's launch. A special thanks to the 45th Space Wing for range, for range support and to the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing support. Orbit insertion. Today's mission marks the 26th and final launch of 2020. For all of those tuning in, have a happy and healthy new year. Thank you for watching and we'll see you all in 2021.